Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, more of these very interesting conversations uh, we have here. Um, we just uh, got off a conversation about the International Day of Tolerance. And uh, moving into something else, you know, that might be pretty similar. And that is from Pastor Tunde Bakari um, sharing his views uh, on Sunday with regards to the end SARS protest and the government's activities uh, um, or response rather to that protest. We're going to be bringing in our guest very soon, Yomi Ogunola, uh, to of course have a quick conversation about this with us. I hope it's going to be very, very interesting. But before that, let's listen to what Pastor Tunde Bakari had to say. Some of the actions recently taken by the government on the heels of the answers protest may need to be reversed sooner rather than later in our collective best interest so that they do not trigger further protests. While I admit that under our extant laws, banks may freeze an account upon an expert order granted to a law enforcement agency by a court of competent jurisdiction for the purpose of investigation, base provisions of our law should not be used to intimidate Nigerian youths simply because they engage in and promoted protests against the inactions of government. To extend the olive branch to the youth in one breath, as the chief of staff and top ministers in the government are now sent to consult with the Obers, the Obis, and the Emers across the nation to extend the olive branch to the youth in one breath, and to deprive the youth of the right to freedom of movement and property as enshrined in our constitution in another breath, we send confusing signals to them and cast doubts in their minds regarding the sincerity of the government. The immediate reversal of this action, therefore, will calm raw nerves and fast track peace in our land. All right, we still have uh, Mr. Ogun Lola. Uh, I'll just go straight and ask, do you think that a reversal of the actions of the government, it's possible at this time, considering that more action seems to be coming from them? Oh, sorry. I, I, I didn't get that question clearly. Okay, I'm asking you in reference to what uh, Pastor Tunde Bakari just said. He, he said the government is sending confusing signals and it, it puts doubts in the minds of the young and Nigerians generally. And he's asking for the reversal of the freezing of accounts and some of the actions that the government has taken regarding the NSAS protest. So I'm asking you, sir, do you think that there will be a reversal, that the government will listen? Yes, thank you very much. I am on the same page with the... Uh, pastor uh, Tunde Bakari. You see, what we called for is reconciliation. For a very long time, I had advocated that Nigeria needs a peace conference, a truce conference, if we are desirous of building a nation. Because Nigeria and Africa stands in the best position if we can build our nation. Unfortunately, however, government has been shilly shally, you know, uh, in its approach uh, to, to, towards, you know, the establishment of a, 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 a true, truly great nation. Where the government is going, the approach the government is adopting is an insidious approach and would likely lead us to a no good area. For instance, there are panels already set up. Those panels have not come out with their findings, and yet government is already passing judgment. The findings that are coming now from, from, from the panel is revealing the kind of government that we have, a government that has lied as an official policy, they told us that soldiers came. They said, no, they said, initially they said soldiers did not come. They said the game. They said, uh, so we will invited them. Ah, okay, when we got there, we were just shooting into the sky. 
And then they said it was rubber bullets that we shot. And the federal attorney general, I don't know why he had to bring himself into, into all the wahala, you know, bringing disrepute to that office with a statement that he made that hoodlums wearing uniforms were the ones that shot. But look at the facts that are emerging. If indeed it was rubber bullets that were shot and they were shot into the sky, the photographs of those boys who were hit in the thigh and the other one, I think, on his arm, those boys must have been sitting down on trees. So that was why bullets went to hit them. You see, they All should right. listen to Tunde Bakari. Okay. Right. Let, let it is the an... best way we can go now. Nigeria, we need reconciliation. We all are right. all committed to a great Nigeria. Mr. Ogulola, let me, let, let me interject and ask you another, take it from another angle. Bakari did somehow give an out to the government when he suggested that if there are legitimate security reasons why the passport of some of these um, uh, uh, campaigners were f um, withheld and the accounts frozen, that it should be made public so people can understand the reason for the actions being taken by government. Why do you think that the government has refused to listen to reason and tell the person whose passport you're withholding why you are doing that? And of course, talk about the reason for freezing the accounts of these people before the ex parte motion uh, was uh, gotten. Yes, you see, that's exactly what, I, uh, what, what we're saying. That it is very, very wrong for them to have gone ahead to free the accounts of the answers protesters. As Bakari rightly said, it is only by the order of court that they can do that. And they cannot take the laws into their own hands. But the way it appears to me is they did take the laws into their own hands which is very, very wrong. So if we are desirous of reconciliation, that should not be government's position at all. Demonizing the protesters, it should not be the government's position at all. Do you think the Rounding government will the... take the suggestion and divulge the reason why they are taking the actions they are taking? That's um, uh, where I'm actually Wale, headed. Wale Shoyinka already told us who they are. They are deaf. Deaf people, low and joba. They are deaf. They won't listen until they cause katakata and cause wala. So, That's the kind of people we have in, 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 in government. Reprobate. That's what they are. So, you know. The, Otherwise, why would you not listen to good advice? Huh? Is, it, is it not the same way we advised them during Shogore's case? We said, look, Shogore's case is a very small case. Just put one small misdemeanor charge and let the boy be released. They did not listen. They went to keep him at home. Today, they recorded the negative for the government. And I am expecting the same thing would happen to them here. Because especially now, there is so much international concentration on the outcome of, you know, the panels that have been set up and all the rest of the stuff. Yeah, government cannot be passing judgment when the panels have not come up with their findings. It Mr. is very, very, very wrong. Mr. Ogunola, like I, I want the you to... Before the horse. I, I want you to share your thoughts on the possibility of another protest, the possibility of the actions of the government provoking another uh, protest. Because like you've said, it, it doesn't seem like the government is listening. Uh, I would like to believe that the government also has people, you know, with some wisdom, um, like yourself, like uh, Pastor Tunde Bakari, in, uh, um, amongst them. And so they should have also shared this same advice to them. Um, what, is, what are the possibilities of the government provoking another protest uh, after mm. the actions that they are taking? You see, my brother, the government has already set the stage for another protest. I was reading on, online this morning that some youths went yesterday and burned another police station, probably because a policeman shot again, shot an innocent person again. You see, and that is why I, I said earlier that the government is not desirous of reconciliation. Rather, the government is fueling the crisis. Now, look at, they say they are paying Nigerians 30,000 Naira minimum wage. Those people on minimum wage are Nigerians. They are Nigerians. 
and you are not providing them power. Many of them have gone to buy, I pass my neighbor generator. And government is saying from their 30,000 naira, because they have to buy four liters every day. So in a month, that they will be spending about over 20,000 naira to buy fuel to power their houses because they are not providing power. What are you creating? So a man who earns 30,000 naira a day and has to spend 20,000 on it buying fuel, what does he have left to take care of his family? You can see what is happening. Majority of the women, married and single, are on the streets hawking their bodies. And the children of those people, I'm sure you must have heard about the one million boys. Despite police uh, extrajudicial killings of their members, the number continues to rise because their parents cannot take care of them. The money they have cannot take them home. Okay, let, is let government me, not let laying me. the foundation for another protest? Let it me. is laying it to government is laying it to okay uh, if uh, to avoid this kind of um, foundation uh, that you worry about is there actions in clear terms that the government can take now immediately in response to all the recommendation coming from elder statesmen in this country to avoid the possibility of another protest and to you know, engrave in the hearts of the young people that they are indeed sincere in their efforts to reform not only the Nigerian police, but other areas that has been highlighted by these protests. Okay. You see, our government must be benevolent. The very first step is for Muhammadu Buhari to come out and apologize to Nigerians without any excuses. Come out, apologize to them. We are wrong. Government agencies have done wrong. But we are doing our best now to try and reform these agencies. One, two. Government should now start working on a social security system. The people have already showed government what they need by breaking into all of those warehouses and taking food. Don't they need food, and government can appease them by making those things available to them. Right. Chebi is our country. If they have removed subsidy from petroleum, why can't they put it on food? Why can't they put it on housing? Why can't they regulate, you know, landlord-tenant relationship in such a way that majority of our people don't suffer? They have left those innocent people in the hands of third parties, those people who are seeking for rent. Somebody wants to rent a house. You say a uh, total package, 250,000 naira, when the landlord is going to collect 150. Those are areas where the people really feel the pinch of bad governance. So it is those areas that government should come out and find a way to address. Okay. The area of Mr. education. Mr. The area of providing health, 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 health facilities for the people and making food, food, oil gel, especially, very, very cheap. I, 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 I want to move in a different direction. Um, but from what you've said now, I'm, I'm sure you would, you would agree that an apology without a, a change in actions or approach is almost worthless. No matter how many times you apologize, if you don't change uh, the manner with which you uh, handle certain situations, then it, it almost feels like no apology. But I want to ask now about um, something, you know, uh, Pastor Tunde Bakari. In other climes, we've seen the likes of Reverend Al Sharpton, um, Bishop uh, Desmond Tutu and the likes, uh, come out to vocalize their uh, thoughts with regards to government um, um, actions. Do you think that we have that level here in Nigeria? Do you think that the likes of Pastor Tunde Bakari and other religious leaders have that voice that they should be able to effect change with in Nigeria? Yes. Pastor Bakari is a Nigerian. And the constitution of Nigeria allows the people participation in their own governance. So Bakari is just doing what any other Nigerian, like you and my sister there, are doing. So, and if it is based on the truth, if they are 
eulogizing stoicism. Stoicism, which extols virtue as the greatest good, then they can fly. That's what we Nigerians want. We want the greatest good, you know, with a, 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 a ruled by virtue. Uh, and that's the advice he is giving to government. If it is a wise government, he should listen. We are doing it. Everywhere I am out here getting interviews, like so many other wonderful Nigerians are doing, we do have a voice. The Constitution gives us a voice, and nobody can take that away from us. Why do you think it is left to them, though, whether do... they will take it or I mean, they will take it, and yeah. then get them problems. Why do you think the government doesn't seem to be listening? This government is not listening. It appears Baba Bubu is too old. The people who are advising him are just thinking of their pockets. Because I don't know, if the man is seeing everything that is happening now, he should be thinking about the legacy. What legacy is he going to leave for Nigeria? Everybody is celebrating their rollings all over the world. If Buhari goes, God spare his life. Let him spend more years. But what will be said about him? Because he is supposed to play the role of a father to all. Look at what is happening. The case of, uh, uh, of oil in the South-South. And the new, the immediate information we are getting from Zamfara and their gold. Is that how a father should, 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 should behave amongst his children? Buhari really has, we, we, we credited him when we saw him working on all the abandoned projects of the Jonathan's government. Every Nigerian credited him. I sang his eulogies all over the place. When he started exposing corruption in Nigeria, because he did a lot, even if many of those people have not been caged yet, you know, the fact that they were exposed, the fact that official secrets became public, we give credit to him. But on so many other areas, Buhari has failed. He is not behaving like a father. If he is behaving like a father, he should listen to his children. If is he it, listens to his children, it, uh, government will not be taking the position it is taking now. Especially on the, 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 the people are angry. Is that going to lie? Is, are you is, announcing is it, your own anger too? Anger plus where where would you say um or what which would you say is more important a father or an elected president uh because we we keep throwing around and i think the um uh, special advisor to the president Femi Adishin, also made mention of something like this a few days ago that um, yeah. because of the fatherly you know nature of president buhari and that is the reason um, oh, or it could have it could have gone a lot worse. So I'm 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 saying this because of you know the same analogy that you're using about him being a father and and you know that's what you know he should or those are the values that he should you, you, you bring see, out you, you, at a time like this. Yeah, Did we elect see, a father or we elected a president? Good. I think we did both. Go when you go into the history of America, the formation, the foundation of America, they hardly call them presidents but fathers of, you know, the system. One thing we're getting wrong here, when APC produces the president, the president believes he is the president for APC. Or when it is PDP that provides, you know, a governor, that gets a governor elected, he thinks he is the governor of PDP. That should not be the kind of politics we're playing. Politics should stop at the point of election, and you become responsible to the generality of the people, whether they voted for you or not. That is the role that you are supposed to play. So they are supposed to be fathers of the nation. What do we call their wives? We call them mothers of the nation because of the privileged position, position they occupy. Yes, indeed, we elected presidents, but if he behaves very well and does what is right, he can be called father of the nation if he behaves like a father. Because it is at his disposal that many is dispensed. So many of the resources of state is dispensed. They determine who gets what, where, when, and how. But it is the father who does that in the home. And so why should he be different at that level? He, he must, should be he, a father. He, he can play he both should be a father to as all. a father and as a president. Um, I guess there's so much more to talk about, but the, the most important thing is to listen, not only to listen, but to be seen as having listened by the actions that is taken. Thank you very much, Mr. Yomi Ogunola, for joining us on The Breakfast. It's always a pleasure.
you know, to take care. You know, something that he said that stuck out for me, I, I had to write it down. He said, government cannot be passing judgment when investigation is ongoing. And that is, I mean, that is the punchiest line for me today because they are already, by the actions they are taking, seeming to pass judgment. They set up these panels to investigate. Investigation has barely commenced, right? You stopped somebody from traveling. Okay, if there is a reason, let us know the vault that reason. So we are on the same page with you and not accusing you of all kinds of, you know, um, dictatorial uh, tendency it, when you do it, things it, like this. It always trickles down to the reasons we have jungle justice in Nigeria. Because if the government already is passing judgment on someone that they haven't even investigated, um, you know, when we see, or when, of course, you know, the citizens see someone who stole, you know, allegedly stole a phone, they don't bother passing judgment. They don't, they don't bother um, investigating or finding them guilty. Yes, you know, in the past week, I've seen two stories um, of mob justice. So, so it's, you know, it trickles down all the way. And it's been the um, m m way of action of Nigerian, of the Nigerian government and Nigerian people for the longest time. It and has it's one to of the change. Things, it has to. It has it's to one change. of the things and that we mentioned earlier, we spoke about earlier. Um, what have we learned in what way we get in better? We can't keep doing the same thing and expect, um, you know, a different result. I personally, of course, and that's why I asked the question to Ms. Agumola, when we keep throwing around this father-children narrative, it doesn't help us in any way. Um, and, and it's a reason a lot of people are afraid to speak out today and say, there's something wrong in this part of the country. There's something wrong with our security. There's something wrong with our health care. There's something wrong with education. There's a lot wrong in many, many aspects. But people are afraid to say those things because, in quotes, they elected a father and they, they I, want I, to respect... I disagree with you um, in that regard because those. in this part of the world, even Mr. Yomi talked about it, in this part of the world, we have our cultures. We have the things that we say as a mark of respect. Calling him a father, has it stopped him from saying he has failed in certain areas? Calling him a father, has he said, has he not highlighted the issues that he has failed to address as somebody who is in a position of responsibility. I think, I think we should lean, you know, so. I think my point is, we should lean more towards asking that he plays the role of a president, an elected president, and yeah. not a father. You know, when we when we keep saying, oh, act like a father, is this how your father treats his children? That's not what I we see, need. I see what And we will mean. never really get mean, the but... best out of people that we elect in governance if we keep asking them to act like fathers or mothers, they should act like the mean, people that we elected. I just also wanted to bring in the cultural contest, why we do... It, it should it should do. rest for a bit. <laughs> okay. if, we, if we truly Someone are going to demand better, we should put those things aside for a bit and actually demand better. If, you have, if you've been elected into, into a government position, you should act... Um, and according to the constitution, not not according to our you know religions and our, our sentiments and the respect okay. that we have. Let, let's uh, talk about these uh, trend of this same conversation on the freezing of accounts and the reaction of Nigerians. I saw a story either on the Punch or the Premium Times um, talking about Nigerians reacting and suggesting that the banks that went ahead and froze this account before the other was um, enacted, they don't seem to be taking a part in this conversation. We're all talking about the CBN. Don't these banks have a responsibility to act in the interest of their clients pending an investigation or do they just, you know, listen to the CBN and is the CBN now an arm of the government? These are the kind of conversations that you see when the issue of the freezing of the accounts, you know, the taking to court of these persons and all of that uh, keeps circulating. So I go back to what uh, Mr. Yomi Ogunlola said. Government cannot be passing judgment when investigation is ongoing. I think that's uh, a good Pretty place to up. rest it uh, for Hello. now. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.